Now, the best part of a century ago, Edgar Rice Burroughs wrote a pot boiler called The Land That Time Forgot. He was thinking, of course, of South Staffordshire, where today, seven weeks after the rest of us, they held the general election. The delay was caused by the tragic death of one of the candidates. The local MP has been the Conservative, Patrick Cormack, for over 35 years, when our reporter David Grossman was still in short trousers, I'd imagine. Haymaking under a perfect sky, a timeless scene from Middle England, albeit with a modern twist. And this has to be one of the most twisted elections ever. The grass is now a good foot higher than it should have been on polling day. The sitting MP stuck in a perpetual campaign while his colleagues get stuck in down at Westminster. If the Prime Minister had had one of his maverick opponents die, he would not yet be in Parliament. The constitution of the Labour Party, I believe, says that the leader of the party must be an MP. Well, you know, they would have had a real conundrum, wouldn't they? If the Speaker had had a, an opponent die, he couldn't have been elected Speaker. And so I think the law needs looking at, and it needs looking at urgently, because mavericks will be tempted if it isn't. Uh, and you could have people who are bent on some extraordinary cause, who are prepared to commit suicide, or you could have terminally ill people deliberately entering the lists. It really does need looking at. Perhaps it's the lovely weather, but the voters aren't exactly rushing to the polling stations. Has it been difficult to maintain the sort of enthusiasm for voting, the sort of excitement of the whole... No, 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 no. You don't no. look that excited. No, right? it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Something that's not all the same, a factor that general election candidates on May the 5th didn't have to compete with, Tim on the telly. The Henman factor could be, could, it could be a reason why it's been a little slow in the last half hour, hour or so, but I'm sure it'll pick up later. And is it good for you if he wins or loses, do you think? Oh, Henman, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. You don't want to, uh, don't want to judge the British sporting public on uh, how they'll feel after a, a victory or a loss. Game, set a match. But dear, oh dear, the favourite of Middle England loses. An omen, perhaps, for the Conservative candidate? Another sign that might get superstitious Conservatives slightly worried, the UKIP campaign has rented offices right behind Tory HQ. Offices that come with the right of way to walk up and down the Conservatives' driveway. The fact you've got right of way across the Tories' front lawn, how does that work? Well, quite easily, we just walk through. We don't abuse it, but they seem to think we can't do it, so we just tell them politely that we've got the right of way. And is, is that a good sort of metaphor for the contest, do you think? Well, no, it just upsets them. It doesn't upset us, and we don't, we don't really go out to upset them. You keep in, you know, in, in, in coming on to Tory territory? It's not Tory territory. It's not Tory territory at all. It's the electors territory, and it's what they decide. This is not a by-election. Pub quizmasters and would-be political anoraks, please note, it is technically a delayed poll. But since new candidates have been free to join the race, it does have a by-election feel about it. There's even a celebrity standing for the English Democrats' party. Well, of sorts. It's a, a TV critic. And Sir Patrick, well, he's not happy. I don't think others should be allowed to enter the lists. Take either one of them... Uh some journalist called Bushel wasn't even seen in the constituency today because he was writing some newspaper column. Well, I mean, what sort of a person is that to offer as a serious candidate to an electorate? It's an insult to them. Well, I can't uh, say anything nasty about him because he's a TV critic. Oh, well, yes. <laughs> Perhaps he can criticise this programme then. <laughs> I, I couldn't care a damn. <laughs> Whatever happens, sometime in the early hours, the last piece of white on the 2005 general election map will be coloured in, and South Staffordshire can catch up with the rest of the UK. Well, please, Peter Snow, at least. Uh, David Grossman joins us now from uh, the count, it looks like, David. Yeah, are we looking at another Henman-style upset? I don't think we are. What I can tell you at the moment, Jeremy, is that democracy is definitely cooking under the metal roof of this leisure centre. It's absolutely sweltering in here. The only slight breeze coming from the, the counting of the ballot papers. A few minutes ago, the last of the ballot boxes came in. 
They've opened that up. They're counting now. Uh, the Conservatives are confident. A low turnout, they think, something between 30 and 40 percent, but they think they're holding on to this seat. The Liberal Democrats and Labour are telling me privately there they've both got second place. So I think we can suggest that they haven't won. One factor that's complicated it for the Conservatives is, of course, they're in the middle of a kind of leadership, pre-leadership contest. They haven't really got a leader that, to take them into the next election. They haven't really get, got any policy. So that's made it harder for Sir Patrick Cormack. But I think he's probably hung on. You do look as if you're in a bit of a time warp there, um, David. But it, the result won't really determine who goes to number 10, of course, will it? No, and in that respect, it feels like a by-election. It isn't, of course, a by-election. It's a delayed poll. It feels like a by-election. And some factor that has changed is, of course, Europe. On May the 5th, it wasn't a big issue. Now, of course, we're in the middle of a spat over the rebate. We've had the no votes from the Dutch and the French. And UKIP are telling me that they think they've done quite well here, and they think that Jacques Chirac has been their best cheerleader. David, thank you very much.